Hi there, I'm Janet Bogwa. Welcome to another conversation on Your Voice Matters, a series of conversations that's reflecting on 26 years since the Beijing Women's Conference. Uh, this is in association with Equality Now, Better for Kenya and Capital FM. And we've been doing this for weeks now, speaking to different influencers and different people in the space and um, policy makers as well, trying to take stock on what has changed in 26 years, um, what more needs to change for the next 26 years. We really shouldn't be here <laughs> years from now discussing the same issues, especially around gender-based violence and mm -hmm. sexual harassment. And so at the end of this conversation, we'll also have a call to action for you all to register for the Generation Equality Forum, which starts on the 30th of June, and also put out a national helpline number just for those of you who are dealing or know somebody who's dealing with gender-based violence. Today, it's all about um, young women and how gender equality looks like through their eyes. What's their call to action? How can we continue to mobilize young, fiery women um, to just be included in these conversations and create the change they want to see? I'm excited about my panel today. We have, I will read <laughs> respectfully. So first we have Grace Jerry, who is a content creator and writer at Capital FM. Um, it's very good to have you with Thank us. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, we have Carol Lagarde, who is a program associate with e Equality Now. Thank you for having and me. And then we have Wanjiru Njiru, content creator, <laughs> style influencer. Yeah. Really great to have you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Excited. Yeah, so... You know, you're all young women. Own it, first of all. Yeah. Don't be like, oh, young is relative. Own it. <laughs> I'm young. <laughs> you're young. You're like, I'm young. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I'm young. Um, and I think I'm curious, what comes to mind when you hear gender equality, when you have, when you see conversations around um, women's rights and women's empowerment? Is it slightly foreign to you or is there an understanding that makes sense for you mm -hmm. on a personal level? Maybe we can start with you, Grace. Um. For me, gender equality is so simple. It's that we're all in the same room and I don't feel, oh, I'm a woman and this is a man. And mm -hmm. it's just, we're all human beings here. We're all mm -hmm. having a chat. We're all working on something together just as human beings. And I think that to me is what gender equality means. Yeah, and yeah. sometimes that simplicity is actually the heart of what the issue is. Yeah. It's yeah. about we're all in the same room and we're all capable. Yes. yes. I love that. What about for you, Carol? Uh, for me, it would be that uh, my gender does not come up at any point to to differentiate or to uh, to identify me. You know, mm -hmm. for me it would be that um, being a woman is not something that is used to isolate me from mm. from opportunity or um, something that is used to identify me or isolate me mm. um, from from men you know mm. um, it's not something that even comes up that's not the first thing that clicks when someone says Caroline it's mm. not that oh she's a woman mm. it's what I do mm. and uh, and my competencies as opposed to my gender okay yeah. Yeah. spot on <laughs> that makes a lot of sense for you and you I think I'll just echo the same sentiment is that it doesn't I am deserving and I mm. should be deserving of all opportunities mm -hmm. and my gender should not be a factor and I think for me I became cognizant of that I think straight after high school because I went to an all-girls high school mm -hmm. so it really didn't matter I didn't really see that play out because mm -hmm. we we're all girls mm -hmm. but then now after you start interacting and then you're more aware mm -hmm. of like okay now this is a guy in primary school okay it doesn't really matter yeah. your parents are sheltering you mm -hmm. But like now in university, now you start to realize and you start to interact without influence from parents so much. So I think that's when I became cognizant of the fact of that gender equality issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I like that because it's, it's only when we go out into to the world and interact yeah. with the world. A lot of us are sheltered, I think, yeah. you know, and so it's, you kind of have to define these on your own. I'm curious as to whether there's been any experience mm -hmm. that has made you say, oh wait, that, that you've witnessed gender mm. inequality based on the fact that it's you as a woman, mm. whether it's something you experienced or you saw somebody experience, is, is there anything like that? Like whether it was for work, whether it was um, uh, you know, in school or whatever the scenario was in college, where it was such a stark reminder of the fact that gender equality exists. Anything that comes to mind for any of you that you witnessed or experienced yourselves? I think for me, um, I was in a relationship. I don't know how this will come out. <laughs> I was seeing someone at, in college, university. And then, um, so I've always just been ambitious. Like I knew what I want, I know all these things. And so like when we're having a conversation as is in every relationship about the future. So he was like, I have these ambitions for myself. And like once they materialize, I expect you 
to leave yours and now take care of the home. And I'm like, but no, that's not what I want. And it's mm -hmm. like, oh no, it doesn't matter. So I, I become automatically the person who calls the shots mm -hmm. in terms of like my dreams have panned out. And so you kind of take a back seat. Mm -hmm. And I think from that time I was like, oh, so now mm -hmm. exact explain to me why you think my ambitions and my dreams need to take a back seat mm -hmm. for yours. Mm -hmm. I think that's when for me it started now to yeah. play out. Did you also, was that the point of exit as well? Yeah, it, it was a part where I started <laughs> to emotionally check out. Okay, <laughs> yeah. right. Before it took some time. Before yeah. Like, well, I think what's important about that is some people don't recognize that yeah. it's a form of manipulation yeah. or emotional abuse. So, yeah. you know, kudos for being self-aware enough to be like, no, yeah, that's I not for me. Yeah. Do you yeah. also find, and you can also speak to what Wanjira said in terms of experiences and also wondering whether you also find that a lot of your peers are not as self-aware. Mm. Um, I'll give an example. I was doing a series of interviews and one lady was saying, um, you know, for her, her version of love, if she was in an abusive relationship and all her peers would tell her, oh, but it means he loves you. Mm. If he's physically assaulting you, it means he loves you. What? And so she came out of it. Yeah. And, you know, she said she normalized it completely. Yeah. And even when she was taken to a forum about gender-based violence, she'd stand up and say, no, 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 mm. they're lying to you. If he's abusive to you, he, he loves you. But just her saying, among my peers, it's still an issue. A lot mm. of women think and see empowerment mm. and they don't they're not deserving mm. of it yeah. so first again whether you've experienced um, inequality or seen it and then just your thoughts on whether your peers are also aware about what they deserve I yeah. think of one instance um, we went for a work thing and uh, we went we went to somebody's house and um, I remember we all sat down and we we're trying to get work done and after that we get the work done and um, one of the guys asked me so um, since you're the lady here could you organize how we could sort out the food? Oh, and I said, I know. Oh. <laughs> but we all came here together. I'm I also I know. Don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Mm. We, we just came here together, all of us. Yeah. I also yeah. don't know. He says, no, no, but you, sh you, know, you just try and sort it, eh? mm. sort it for all of us. And I realized, oh, wait. I hadn't realized up until that moment I was the only lady. Mm. Mm. But then I was like, oh, wait. Mm -hmm. You expect there's a way I'm perceived as a woman that yeah. since I'm the woman here that. I should figure out where the food should be, even mm. though we're all guessing. Yeah, I feel like mm. we've probably almost everywhere. all experienced yeah. that. <laughs> how did you yes. react? Like, how did that end? I was shocked. I was like, I yeah. don't know either. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't get the food eventually. Mm -hmm. We ended up leaving and getting food elsewhere. <laughs> okay. But yeah. I was actually shocked. And I think in the, there's no way to prepare for that moment. Like, mm. I'm going to tell this person this next time they tell me this. Mm. So it's just... It's yeah. just realizing, oh my. Yeah, mm. this is this, the reality. I like what you've just said about there's no way to prepare. Mm. And I think that's the thing. You just go through life and there's all these shocks yeah. thrown <laughs> at you. Um, yeah. and, and you kind of figure it out on the go. Yeah. Um, so Carol, again, the same question about, you know, feeling the fact that your gender was either standing in the way or was used against you. Um, I, I would give uh, maybe the the first example of the first time I actually saw gender inequality. It's, it's very, it sounds very silly, but <laughs> so um, I have two brothers. Mm -hmm. um, we were raised equal, you know, treated equally, everything. But then um, once I got to high school and after they went through um, the ceremony for circumcision, mm -hmm. it now became, oh, they're now men. They can't do certain things in the house and I'm like, they can't, they can't wash dishes, they can't like clean the house. <laughs> <and I'm like laughs> okay, so that's how I started mm. uh, rebelling uh, mm. with my parents. And from then I started to see the little, little things. Mm. Like even, even in shags, there are certain roles for men and certain roles for women. And I just could not understand. Mm. And from there, it's when I, I would just see more and more things and be opposed to that, mm. especially mm. in the in the home. Mm. That's something that it gets to me. <laughs> Where suddenly there's no ability <laughs> to wash dishes. dishes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Disappears. Yes, but, but when you move out, you can You're wash dishes. To. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. It suddenly yeah. comes back. Yes. So you're all quite self-aware, yeah. you know. Do you get concerned that a lot of your peers are not? Do you get concerned about um, young women around you who are pretty comfortable with the status quo, comfortable being, um, and this is not to shame you know, people, because it's not just a, a young woman thing. I think mm. it's, it's a woman thing, whether a woman wants to be kept, for example, mm. Mm -hmm. um, because everyone is different. Mm. But in terms of the fact that you all are quite self-aware, you're all working, you're all doing your own thing, is there a part of you that looks around and says, as young women, I think we need to 
fight a little bit harder to be heard, to be mm. seen, and to know what we deserve. Do, you, do any of you feel that way at any point? And maybe could you speak to that? Yeah. Uh, I could go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for me, um, I see uh, as women we are getting more, we, we've gotten more and more opportunities mm -hmm. and we have um, certain legal provisions that protect us in, in, the, in, the, in the law uh, from gender-based violence and, and everything. But something I feel that is missing is we have not been taught um, to be self-aware mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and also to self-respect, to respect ourselves because and, and confidence, you know, that to the point that someone is, undergo, is going through um, emotional abuse, you don't want to leave because you don't want to be alone. Mm. We've mm -hmm. been conditioned that a woman is not worth if they are single, mm -hmm. that you have to, despite all your success, all your achievement, you have to be in mm. a relationship, mm. be married, be with someone mm. for you to, you know, to be something, mm -hmm. you know, to have achieved something. Even as women in your 20s, is that, that's because I think people would, you know, uh, not assume, but mm -hmm. think that, oh no, but no, we're mm -hmm. more self-aware now. So you're saying there's actually still a large there's group a of who are not yeah, yet. I think there's a large group of people mm -hmm. who are not self-aware. And I think th more conversations need to be had. And I think even what's been passed down from our parents or mm -hmm. our moms or mm -hmm. the women who've gone before us. Mm -hmm. I think what they have passed down to us is, I mean, the struggles are more or less the same, but again, it's still more or less not the same because mm -hmm. we are facing like different issues in a social media era. Mm -hmm. It's like there's so much more yeah. that needs to be done, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. 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 Let's talk a little bit about that. But did you, you can add to that. And then let's yes. talk a little bit yeah. about <laughs> social media. Yes. Yeah, no, I was going to say, um, when, I, when, I'm in, when I'm in a social circle, I, I actually am the person who would outgage a situation. I realize, oh, uh, Janet um, thinks of this situation like this. And, um, or if, depending on the context, uh, and if I go somewhere about something you say that I feel, oh, that's, she's not self quite, she's not mm. quite self aware, or she, I, I don't think that's right. Uh, mm. And in that case, I think I'm unable to vocalize it. I will think it, yes, mm. I will think, hmm. Or maybe I'll go discuss it outside later when I leave it. Mm -hmm. that setting mm -hmm. but I find myself not vocalizing and I feel like that yeah. is that's still a do you know why you don't vocalize it is there maybe just fear to okay. uh, just I'm just maybe I'm just like we have different mm -hmm. upbringings I don't yeah. want to cross you okay. and um, mm -hmm. you know I can I don't understand your experiences quite mm -hmm. so I'm not able to say oh that's not work I don't think mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. you know yeah but that's fair and I yeah. still think you know depending on age or whatever it's still an issue yeah you still find women like me, women older, who are not able to, to what you're saying, you're mm -hmm. conditioned, it's been passed on. Mm -hmm. passed yeah, I do look at younger women, many again, mm -hmm. for example, this panel, and I do get excited. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, I love that, you know, for example, social media, and we'll go into it. Mm -hmm. But I love that we're even talking about being self-aware. Mm. That language wasn't there before. They're like, yeah. self-what? <laughs> mm -hmm. But now the fact that exactly. you can actually say, mm -hmm. we need to talk about self-awareness. Yeah. For me, that's already growth and progress yeah. because it can lead to, then let's have a conversation about yeah. equality, about yeah. protection, about safety. Yeah. So already I think, you it's know. A yeah, it's a step. It's, yeah. it's a step. I, it's yeah. definitely a step. So let, let's talk a little bit about social media. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, at least that's why, you know, you all are here. Yeah. And again, I always get, excited mm -hmm. by content creators and people mm -hmm. who are just using that to, um, I don't know, to, to speak to us about what works for them, what makes mm -hmm. sense, to talk to us about products and information. Mm -hmm. I love the space. So tell us a little bit about your own relationship with social media, mm -hmm. good and bad, mm -hmm. and how that perhaps has also in a way, whether it's different for women on mm -hmm. social media mm -hmm. than for men. So we, we could start with you, your, your experience. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> I think for me, my experience as a woman has been the hate on hate by women. I don't really like to focus on it so much. And I think it, bec I used to hear about it, mm -hmm. but I used to think people are exaggerating. Like, it can't be that bad. Like, what do you mean? Uh, we are all supporters of women. We love women. <laughs> but then because I'm very public about my relationship, I realize he never gets a troll comment. He never gets a troll comment. Mm -hmm. But all the troll comments will come to me. And when I ask him, like, how is that? He's like, it's because you're a woman. You're an easy target mm -hmm. for them. But it's not easy for them to come for a guy. Like, it's, it's a bit mm -hmm. harder. But for you as a woman, you're an easy target. They find you soft. You know, wow. they can punch you. Mm -hmm. And it becomes easier for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's been, yeah. I'm just like, 
How, how do you navigate that? How have you learned to navigate that? At first, I used to, I used to cower. Like I used to be like, okay, now I hate this space. But I think with time, I'm, I'm learning to clap back now, mm -hmm. in the sense that you cannot come t tell me who I am. I know who I am. I, I might look soft to you, but. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I dare you. I dare Come. you. Also, Come it's my yeah. timeline. Yeah, you, so don't, you don't have to be here. Make it make sense. Yeah, yeah make yeah. it make sense. Yeah. Great that at least there's that aspect of, yeah. you know, knowing that it's not. What about for you, Grace? What have your experiences been like? Um, I have, a, I, I do say I have a love-hate mm -hmm. relationship with social media. Um, I find myself overthinking, especially when I want to, uh, how I want to be perceived how I carry myself. Mm -hmm. um, I imagine, oh wait, uh, my aunt is on social media, she's watching this thing. Yeah. Um, oh my God, she's going to send this to my grandmother. My grandma is going to ask me, what are those things I'm being mm. told you're putting <laughs> online? <laughs> so that way, I'm afraid of, her, I'm afraid of mm -hmm. the reaction of the other generations, eh? especially mm -hmm. the ones who, my family members. Eh? So in that sense of social media, sometimes I'm unable to fully express myself and just be like, mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but yeah, so I do have a love-hate relationship with it in that sense because yeah. I try to be very correct. Mm. Um, very politically yeah. correct and very edited correct. and, yes, you I, know. It's not the best thing I wouldn't recommend, but uh, <laughs> it works for you. I, but it works for you. But I struggle with it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, it's your journey as well. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, I can speak to, you know, having been in media then social and it's, yeah. it's the same, you know, yeah. I'd be on a bulletin. Yeah. And it's, I'm with Hussein, but they're like, let's target Janet. Yeah. This should be fun. <laughs> um, and then you kind of figure out whether you want to exit or yeah. grow a thick skin. Yeah. But I always say it's your journey. Yeah. So if, yeah. if that's your journey, it's just about navigating it best as you know how. Yeah, yeah. And, and grow that tough skin and mm. also figure out this, this is how, okay. Yeah. This is it, guys. Mm -hmm. This is it. This is, this is how. This is how it is. This is how it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, for you, Carol, and looking at you know Wanjiru, Grace, and a lot of other people, what are your thoughts on how you know young women and social media can also be used as an engine to really grow the conversation around equality and women's rights? When you observe it, mm -hmm. how do you see it as a powerful tool um, to mobilize? more women to speak up and, and participate in these kinds of conversations? Um, I think it does, it's a powerful tool, especially for the young generation, our generation, mm -hmm. because that's what we've grown into it, we've grown up with it, yeah. and we've grown up in it. Um, I would say that it, it helps us to mobilize each other um, on around issues that, that we care about, especially, let me just give an example of of the young lady who was thrown from the balcony. Mm. And uh, when, when she fell down, I, I saw a lot of hate unnecessarily mm. about, about her, a lot of judgment about her. And people were like, no, we, we just cannot take it, you know? We cannot take it. And women, girls also stood up together, mobilized, mm -hmm. and we called on um, media Mm -hmm. to take action and mm -hmm. also advertising agencies and mm -hmm. companies to take action against um, the the yeah. royal was it royal <laughs> media <laughs> <or> <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, the, radio the radio station mm. to act on the two the three journalists so mm -hmm. i think it's it's a mobilization um, tool but also it's a double edged sword because i find that at the same time we are supporting each other we are also fighting each other, mm. and it's it's not necessary. We need to uni unite, mm. and you know, have uh, once we unite, we have a, a louder voice. Mm -hmm. We are stronger together. Mm. Um, another thing I would say is that with social media, particularly, uh, I find that the anonymity aspect of it makes people. Um, feel that they are powerful enough to target mm. women and not have uh, and not be revealed you know not no accountability yeah. yes no no, no sort of accountability. No accountability and i think also young women need to take time off social media and take care of themselves it's not all the time that you you need to defend yourself yeah. mm. you you shouldn't have to do that mm. when when you feel that it's overwhelming take time off recharge mm -hmm. and use it as you wish to mm -hmm. use it not mm -hmm. all the time fighting battles it shouldn't yeah. be that yeah. hard yeah. that's an that. interesting point Bef before we go into a break the thing about taking time off because i remember having this conversation as well mm -hmm. um with some with a content creator uh, you know and 
she was saying, my time off is still on social media, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because yeah. I guess that's her journey. She's like, what do you mean? Because I was saying, and I've said it before, I take social media leave twice okay. a year. Okay. <laughs> I take a, you know, a week off or two weeks off in June and a week off in December. Mm -hmm. And she's like, how? <laughs> yeah. How do you do it? And I, it's fine because I get that everyone is different. Mm. So when you hear Carol say that, I, I'm interested in terms of how, whether you also feel Sometimes I just need to step back and recharge, or whether for you, social media is also the place where you can come and find healing, which I know sounds odd, but for mm -hmm. some people that's their reality. Mm -hmm. How do you navigate that? Does it sometimes just get to a place where you're like, oh no, no, because you're also collaborating with brands, mm -hmm. right? So it's work. Yeah. It's like going to the workplace yeah. and saying I need a timeout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you then have this the headspace to have your mental health in check mm -hmm. with that relationship with social media how do you how do you balance that out i personally i once took a social media break i actually took it for two years sounds oh. it's a very long time to take from your job eh? for two years but uh, <laughs> two years <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes i think at that point i was very young um i was i was i was moving with the motions just running and chasing and chasing and god bless you actually burn out eh? mm -hmm. and i realized this I was probably doing it wrong, and mm -hmm. I think I'd like to say this to a lot of women, is that you have to do it in your own terms. And it, mm -hmm. I know you don't go to work and say, guys, in my own terms, I want to. <laughs> it's the wrong way to do it. Yeah. But I think social, plus your social media gives you that opportunity to say, this page is mm -hmm. going to represent this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this mm -hmm. X number of times. I mm -hmm. want to post like this. I want my content to sound like this. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe you'll battle with yourself with consistency mm -hmm. and uh, saying, oh my God, I, you'd like to say, I'd like to post every day. Mm -hmm. I'd like to create new content every day, but you actually can't. Eh? Mm -hmm. And it's just giving yourself the break that it's okay. Yeah. It's this, I'm going to do this in my terms. Yeah. Um, I'll probably make less money, uh, probably, mm -hmm. <laughs> because, you know, because of the terms, but mm -hmm. at the same time, your mental health, if you don't have good, if your mental health isn't right, mm -hmm. then even mm -hmm. you, won't even, you won't even be able to do mm -hmm. the full, the work mm -hmm. to the extent that you would have wanted. So mm -hmm. I'd say, if you feel like you need the break, I think it's good to take, take it. Break. Uh, mm -hmm. For me, that means deleting the app entirely because I would not have it and just, mm -hmm. if I have it, I'm going to, you know, just let me just pick one thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think it has to be in your own terms for women. Mm -hmm. That break, mm -hmm. take the break if you want it. And yeah. also when you come back, come back in your own terms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially yeah. with a lot of the, um, you know, cyber bullying mm -hmm. against, uh, against women. What about for you? I think same thing as Njeri, just taking breaks. I think mm -hmm. for me, well, taking long breaks, then deleting the app, I'm not able to. But I think I've conditioned myself like at a certain time uh, during after the same way you'd enter work eight to five. I try and create a habit of not entering Instagram past a certain time mm. in the evening, so that that way I can just maybe spend time talking to somebody on the phone or watching a movie, just reading a book, just something that is not. Instagram. That's not social media. Yeah, that's correct. not social media. Like, and that's what I have been trying to cultivate. Mm -hmm. And I think it helps. It, yeah. It's really, really yeah. helped me reduce the pressure of feeling like, ah, I need to be on top of things all the time. Mm. Yeah. I think it always starts off that way. Yeah. Like, I need to post every day. Yeah. And yeah. Then you crash and burn and you're like, this is unworthy. Yeah. It. Yes. It's really it's not, not worth it. it. Yeah. Um, do you put, sorry? Yeah, so go ahead. I was gonna, do, you, do you guys put an up limit after one hour? That's yeah. it. On one <laughs> phone. The other one doesn't have. I need to update. But that's, it's a very smart yeah. way to. Yeah. It's very useful. Yeah, yeah. It's very useful. It says you've put a limit for, I don't know, 10 hours. Yeah. Yes. And so when you go and ask for an another limit, you just feel guilty. Yeah. <laughs> like, let me just add 15 minutes. Yeah. No, nope, let me not add 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, I want to come back after the break and talk a little bit about, you know, our, our safety, whether you all feel safe, protected, um, and how much you follow conversations around not just gender-based violence, but what, you know, the government should be doing and whether it's enough. Mm -hmm. So we'll come back and talk about that right here on Your Voice Matters. Welcome back. You're watching Your Voice Matters with Capital FM, Equality Now and Better for Kenya. Make sure to also use the hashtag Act for Equal. Follow that hashtag to look at the conversations happening around the world right now, building up to the Generation Equality Forum. I'm still here with Grace, Wanjiru and Carol. And we're talking about gender equality through the eyes of younger women and how we can continue to inspire the change we want to see. And right now I want to shift our focus on a very real reality for mm -hmm. so many of us. I think, you know, there's there's a lot of statistics that have shown that most women have faced some form of street harass harassment or sexual harassment. So mm -hmm. 
Um, over the last few years, there's been so many news headlines around femicide, mm -hmm. crimes of passion, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it almost seems like it's, I, people say, oh, it's happening so much now, and maybe it did happen before, mm -hmm. but it's definitely been reported a lot now. I remember this newspaper um, headline, I think it was last year, that showed the faces of all these women who'd mm -hmm. been killed at the hands of men. Men, men who were, they were either in relationships with or men who were stalking them, mm -hmm. or men who said, I sent her money, that she decided not to, you know, be grateful for, and yeah. so I killed her. So how do these affect you? How, how safe do you all feel today as young women in a society that has these glaring headlines mm. every day? What goes through your mind, and how do you navigate life every day as a young woman? Are you busy, like, having checklists of what happens next? So first off, what, is it, what does it look like through your eyes? Let's start with you. So, yeah, I feel safe sometimes and sometimes not safe and it depends on the day depends on an experience that possibly you have I have been through or my friend has told me or I went through this and that also changes the way you you're feeling so for example you think about how you're dressing mm -hmm. uh, who am I going to meet today mm -hmm. how are we going to get there am I going to get into a cab and my Mm. And the cab is saying, mm. and those small things so when I see the stories of women who have died in the hands of men over she didn't dress well today. Uh, she brought this on herself. So I, I had one story uh, a few years ago. I was in CBD, so I work in CBD. So I was on the phone and I was waiting for somebody on Mamangina Street. And I'm on the phone and I'm waiting, calling my friend, oh, where are you? And then um, I saw this guy who was walking, was about to walk right by me. Mm -hmm. And um, he, I don't know how to explain it, but he had one, I think he had one foot shorter than the other mm -hmm. and he had a stick. So I thought he was moving more towards me because, you know, he's having a hard time walking. Mm. So I'm excusing him, I'm excusing him, but he's still walking towards me. And so he gets to me and um, when he got to me, um, he said, Sasa. I said, poor. And then so I tell my phone, let me call you back. So I hung up the call and then um, it happened in like a matter of moments and he sort of like, grabbed my boob and ran away, and then not really ran away because he couldn't run, mm. but oh. walk right away. Yeah. And I thought oh. that stayed with me for so long. I was so disturbed and I thought, oh my God, I'm in a t-shirt. I'm not even like mm. badly no dressed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I imagine now stories, not to say this is a small story, but just the stories of women who have been through us. Mm. I think that's totally heartbreaking. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry that yeah. happened. And yeah. I think, to your point, it's mm -hmm. it's it's not small, and I think, and I've said this before. You know, the the pain of a broken finger and a leg are the same. It's still pain, mm -hmm. yeah. so nobody should ever trivialize their experience. Mm -hmm. It's yes. it's important that um, it, it's it, it's not seen as oh people you know have mm -hmm. been through worse. It's mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. violating yeah. mm -hmm. your your privacy. So I'm really sorry yes, that happened. Yes. That's so uh, when alarming. I imagine now the stories mm -hmm. of women who have been who've been beaten, who've been raped, who've yeah. been killed. The, it's heartbreaking yeah. and it's, it's it's something that also you you feel um a, among your peers is it a conversation that happens a lot yes. a lot more now absolutely until it has happened to somebody that who is close to you you don't have that conversation but when it does mm. it, the conversation comes up more mm. okay mm. what about for you Angie? i think the conversations have come up more i also don't just like agree sometimes you feel safe sometimes you don't, especially when you when you're trying to figure out, okay, where I'm go, where am I going? Who am I going with? How will I get there? Mm -hmm. Okay, if I go with an Uber, let me share my Uber trip with somebody so that in case of anything, mm -hmm. this person knows they are able to track me and all of that. And even just sharing with you, I was telling you guys earlier that there was a time I was with my partner and we were in the car and he was driving, and so we were just stuck on Kim. Mathi Street, I think that is, mm -hmm. and then these street kids just come and my legs were up and I was just in a dress. And this legs, these street kids come and they are knocking and these are like 15 year olds, so you can imagine 15 year olds, mm -hmm. and they're knocking and they're just pointing at my legs, pointing at my legs, and then one of them just licked the window, and it was like, and then pointed again at my legs, and I'm like, you're fift you're probably 15, mm -hmm. and you're already thinking that mm -hmm. you have rights and you mm -hmm. own me, and you can imagine like mm -hmm. how that makes me feel, mm. you know, yeah. and every other woman. I'm sorry about yeah. that. So you probably just kind of, was the immediate reaction was just to put your legs down or were you just shocked yeah, and just continued? just to put the legs down yeah. and then because you're in traffic, there's nothing you can do and you just mm. don't look at them, mm. they will move when they decide to move and you mm. just hope traffic opens up. Yeah. yeah. 
you were with, you know, like you mentioned, you're, you're in a public relationship. Mm. I'm curious about the conversations you do have with your partner around, you know, um, experiences like that. Yeah. And given that a lot of the times these headlines we're seeing now with, with, with younger men, there's almost a sense of um, entitlement. And this is not to say it's not in other generations, but when we look at this whole, these conversations to do with airtime and yeah. fair and that entitlement of, mm. if I'm sending you something, mm. I need something in return. Mm. How do you navigate those relationships with your partner? What are his thoughts on even what young men are feeling and saying and why there seems to be so much vitriol against young women as well? Well, I'm lucky in the sense that he understands. Yeah. So he sees it and he empathizes with women. But it's also interesting to see that he knew that how bad it was. And he knew that this is wrong and everything. But he, he did not understand the gravity of it mm -hmm. until he saw it happened to me. So mm. he was like, okay, now it's really, really bad. And you know the saddest part is, it's, it now became, and bless him, because that's all you can do is that, now when you're going somewhere, you have to tell me so that mm. I can go with you. Because that way I feel, so it, it, it's never like, all right, now how can we fix this issue and make it like, now mm. the men, how can we educate them? It's just a matter of like, okay, so how can I go with you? Or how mm. can I accompany you to this mm. thing so that mm. you're at least safer, yeah. yeah. That's so interesting. It's yeah. it's it's, yeah, it's it's sad in a sense. Yeah. And so you're both saying it's just a very real reality yeah. for for young women not feeling safe, issues of harassment, gender based violence. Yeah. Um, I think uh, you know the the president, President Kenyatta, the other day made a commitment of about twenty three billion uh, Kenya shillings to address gender based violence because it's very real in our society. Mm. We don't have enough shelters. Um, and I know one of the things he committed to was things around making sure police are trained, making sure there's more shelters, ETC. So Carol, before you come in again, just wondering from you both, do you think enough is being done? Do you think there's enough information sharing? Do you think there's enough of an understanding? Mm -hmm. um, even when you think about the fact that right now, if something happened to you, it's not that easy to get you know, justice. Mm -hmm. It's not that easy to go to a police station and feel as though the response they give you mm -hmm. is valid because a lot of the times they'll ask you the usual what were you wearing what were you doing mm -hmm. so from a from your perspective when you see all these things you know going on and all these conversations do you feel is enough is being done and if not then what else needs to be done i think for me it it's the enough is not being done and f it became more clear mm -hmm. to me just last week on Sunday, I was visiting Mathare. So we were just having conversations with like a 17 year old. And I think she was also 18 there about. And she was like, she's just left her marriage um, because the man was beating her. And so she's moved back to Mlango Kuba where the parents are. And by then I was like, so are you, what's the situation here? She's like, I really don't want to go back, but I also don't have mm -hmm. anything to do. I'm just with my kid. And we can't stay, Mlango is another, like our parents come from a whole other situation. And then now this guy, at least he provides and all those things. And for me, I felt in that moment, like she has nowhere to turn to. So yeah. it's, she, it's either she goes back to her abusive relationship with this guy, mm. who's the father of her kid and everything, or she just stays mm. at home where it's, the situation is also not so great. So I think it would be interesting to see how they can trickle down that commitment to the people who are in these communities and how they can be really helped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a, a really important point because yeah. it's, you know, th that's people's reality. Yeah. And so what happens? Um, what about for you? Yeah, I'd, I'd say that, you know, the fact that we're having this conversation, I think that's probably the best place to, t to start. A lot of times, a l things, are going, your things are going on with people and people are not vocalizing mm. enough for fear but just the conversation is possibly the, fa the best place to start. Like what when is saying, how now does it trickle down to, okay, I have opened up and said this is what I'm going through. Mm. Will I get help now? Will, mm. is it, would th does me speaking make it worse? Mm. So mm. Let, we will see how it trickles down now to, mm. the, to help, mm. really. Yeah. yeah, and not just in those communities, but really for everyone, because yeah. it, it could happen, to you know, anyone. to everyone. Yeah, um, so Carol, just echoing what, you know, Grace and Wanjiru are saying, you know, I, I remember being there when he made that commitment and mm -hmm. yeah, for a minute, there's a glimmer of hope because you're like, thank you, first of all, for acknowledging that, how devastating you. this <laughs> issue is. Yeah. Um, and then, the, you know, he kind of went through the different ways in which it would happen. Um, what are your thoughts on how 
he and the government can fully capture the needs on the ground and match that commitment to essentially what they're saying and just how big the, the gaps are on the ground? Um, um, I could start with the gaps. Uh, of course, there's a, there's a huge difference between uh, what should be done on paper um, and what is actually done. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, we, we do, Equality Now does work uh, with police officers and, and members of the court users committee to train them on, on, on their responsibilities and also laws on SGBV. So in one of such training, um, a question was asked uh, whether the police officers uh, have, had ever seen a post-rape care form. And most of them had never seen it um, in that particular forum. I'm not saying mm -hmm. all over the country, but in that particular forum. Mm -hmm. And this is because these forms were not available in hospitals. Mm -hmm. and, um, and in hospitals, it was expected that the survivors or the victims of defilement or rape would now ask for the PRC form. Mm -hmm. How would a victim, would you know that mm -hmm. you need to ask to for a PRC mm -hmm. form mm -hmm. unless you're told? You wouldn't know. Would you be in the state of mind? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. So what you're given in the police station when you go to report, you're given a P3 form. And then you're expected that as you come back, you come back with a post rape care form, the mm -hmm. PRC form. So that was not filled, which means what? That's a crucial evidence that has to be submitted in court for, for to secure a conviction. If it's not submitted in court, then there's very, very weak evidence mm -hmm. connecting the perpetrator to, to, the, to, the, to the crime. So with, with the commitments that the government has put, we feel that it needs to now break down the, the amount of money into what exactly they will be investing in. Mm -hmm. Because it's not enough to say we will do, we will give, I mean, we will invest $23 million mm -hmm. to GBV prevention and, and, um, and response, plus FGM. It needs to go beyond that. Mm -hmm. We need to look at the quality of the investment. Are you investing in shelters? Mm -hmm. If you're training policemen, are you also training the other people, the other actors who are in the justice chain, mm -hmm. the prosecutors, mm -hmm. the medics, because medics are important people who, who collect evidence. Mm. And if they're not trained, which usually doesn't happen, mm -hmm. if they're not trained how to fill the, PR, the PRC form, how to fill the P3 form, yeah. then everything you've done mm. stops at the police. Mm. Mm. And I think I also need to uh, point at something important. We also need to invest in how we treat victims. Mm. There's a lot of victim shaming when yeah. they go to report. And mishandling of mm. victims in general. So if I go to report um, a case to a police station, there's no gender desk or there's no specific room where I can actually tell you that mm. I have gone through rape. I am expected to report it while there's a mm. theft. I mean, someone mm -hmm. arrested for theft, <laughs> a traffic offense. Mm. So, you know, the, the crime itself is scandalous. Everyone will stop and start, you mm. know, eh -heh, eh -heh, what yeah. happened? You know, mm. so how, how would I mm. feel? Yeah. I, I wouldn't yeah. be comfortable yeah. even talking. I, you know, so we need to also invest in how we treat uh, mm. victims, providing them psychosocial support as well as shelters. Mm. So the whole response of prevention and, and uh, uh, prevention and response to SGBV should be looked at, at a ho uh, as a holistic, mm -hmm. mm. you know, holistically, not yeah. just one yeah. thing, the entire system. Mm. Needs to be looked at. And, I, yes. and I'm glad you've brought up those points because I know they've also come up in several of these conversations. Mm. And it's on emphasizing that, that hopefully, if you're watching, you begin to really understand um, that these gaps truly exist and that while a commitment is important, it's how is it being used. Mm. Um, so we're bringing this back to the younger generation, young women. We're looking at 26 years after this global convening of gender equality, which was so groundbreaking. And now, you know, and I think we talked a little bit about it. You, you talked about defining gender equality yeah. for yourselves. How can we get more women, more young women, women and men, by the way, but young women like yourselves, how do we get you guys invested, mobilized, fired up to participate um, and to almost own 
own these conversations because it's really, unfortunately, it's almost like it's, it's passing on <laughs> the crimes, so mm. to speak. Mm -hmm. These issues were addressed then. They were addressed 10 years later. Now they're being addressed 26 years later. Um, and I think I was talking to all of you about, I was part of a panel <laughs> that had sort of like gender equality warriors. Mm -hmm. And they were saying, we, we need to see you all taking to the streets and marching like we did. Mm -hmm. And I remember in the room, a lot of women were saying, well, it's evolved. It's not like we don't, we still have issues and we're not saying we're averse to marching. We're saying we have our own way mm -hmm. of speaking out and mm -hmm. speaking up. So it was a very interesting exchange. Mm -hmm. So how can we, um, how can we have this baton passed on? What do you think is needed to engage you guys mm. in this conversation um, and to get your peers invested and to get everybody saying, this needs to stop. Mm. Um, and disclaimer, we're not saying that you're not doing that. Mm -hmm. We're not saying that. We're just saying that fire, mm. that urgency, that need to say, it ends with my generation. Mm. How do we get that to happen? What are your thoughts on what you need what needs to be seen, what needs to be done, and how to get more young people invested. Yeah. I think <laughs> for me, even as we're continuing to have these conversations, I think it's important to emphasize in that it's not up to a specific group of women yeah. or young women or people with like 80,000 followers, 100,000 followers to, do, to amplify this story. I think it's for every person, if you have a social media platform, because we live, we are a social media generation, that's how we communicate, that's how we view life, um, I think it doesn't matter. You don't have to be an influencer to speak on such things. I, I think the 10 people or the 15 people who follow you, and if you can create that domino effect, mm -hmm. um, I think then we can make significant progress in, in helping everyone own this process. So it's not just for influencers or select people with like a voice or a platform. I think it's for everyone. If you have a social media account, mm -hmm. then you can be able to do something about it. Yeah. yeah. Really true. Your thoughts? Yeah, I was going to say, allow me to take you back uh, a few steps, but I'll, I'll get to the point. <laughs> uh, but when I see this issue, I just imagine this is what we're going through in 2021, mm -hmm. um, the harassment. Eh? So can you imagine what our parents' generation went through, eh? mm -hmm. our grandparents' generation went through? Eh? And in a sense, in a sense, what you are today is th is what is you. It's because you are, you know, the influences you have are because of what you've got from your fam, from your parents, your mm -hmm. mother, your grandmother. Yeah. So, for example, I look at now what my mother. I have chats with her about what she, she went through while she was at work mm -hmm. as a mother, and I imagine I cannot now come here and be in this position and keep quiet. Mm -hmm. I think it's just imagining, can you imagine how far we've come? Eh? It can't end with us. It's just speak about it. Even if it's, it doesn't, and I know sometimes you look at it, you're like, oh, but I'm just one person. I'm mm -hmm. not able to, yeah. you know, control the entire population of women. But it's just in your own small ways, the way you address the younger generation, the way you carry mm -hmm. yourself, um, just in that sense, I think that is how we, and even to have people understand that, you know, your other people have fought for this opportunity. In yeah. fact, you're enjoying a privilege. Mm -hmm. Something has already been fought for you. Eh? So mm -hmm. keep carrying it, keep talking about it. And I think that is mm -hmm. what is, that should, that, that is what should give us the fire. Mm -hmm. That other people have done the, I'd say the bigger job for us mm -hmm. and for us is to keep it up. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah. to follow through. To keep it up and to follow it Yeah, through. that's yeah. powerful. Again, you know, I, I know soon on this platform we're having a conversation on social media, online bullying, mm -hmm. so we wouldn't delve too much into it. But the truth is, to your point, it's mm -hmm. a social media yeah. generation. Mm -hmm. um, do you individually sometimes feel like, if I raise this issue online, um, is there a fear and concern about doing it? In the sense of, you know, yes, I like the way you're saying everybody needs to use their platform. The way you're saying, I also need to do better mm -hmm. so that I don't go through necessarily what my mom went through. Mm -hmm. But as content creators, as influencers, who so many people look up to, um, and who create amazing content that's really interesting and rich. Do you sometimes feel a little bit concerned about touching on contentious issues? Or are you at a point where you're like, nope, <laughs> when I feel like I want to talk about something, I will. How do you navigate that? Yeah. I'd say I feel a little bit of both. There's mm. sometimes you look at a topic, you're like, if I dip one toe in here, um, mm. I might open up Pandora's box. Eh? 
but I think the confidence of actually touching on issues comes mm -hmm. from educating yourself on the issue. Mm -hmm. If you take time to research on that issue, even if in the moment when you're riled up, mm -hmm. you can pause and take days to just understand the matter mm -hmm. and then you can now come back mm -hmm. and you know with the position uh, and this is how I feel mm -hmm. and I guess that's the one part and the other part is when you feel like you should when you feel strongly about something mm -hmm. I think it's always right to touch on it mm -hmm. always right to bring it up mm -hmm. because if you're feeling that strong you speak a lot of times you speak not just for yourself somebody's like oh me too me too mm -hmm. me too and that is how you start mm -hmm. conversation so I feel like if you feel strongly about it touch on it and if it's going on out there you can take it some time to you know research on it and understand exactly mm. what's going on yeah. it's very smart yeah so when you plug in it's from a point of knowledge yes. and understanding what about for you i think previously i've held back because i'm like i don't have enough information or maybe mm -hmm. i don't feel like i'm the right person but i think the older i have grown i've realized as grace was saying that i have a responsibility mm -hmm. to pass it on and maybe my passing it on is using my platform mm. to voice that to work yeah. is, is it also safe to say that perhaps you know what would also work and help is making people influencers feel like there's a safe space to mm. express yeah <laughs> so that you don't feel like you're just alone in the woods yeah you've tweeted yeah. and then when everybody comes at you yeah. you're like ah that, that was, that's not got anything to do with me because yeah. i hear that a lot yeah and i'm like these are people who have incredible power and influence, mm. but I also know how vicious it can be. Mm. So maybe it's just to think about how do we create that safe, envi that safe, safe environment. environment so yeah. that even as you're mobilizing and bringing more people, yeah. they feel like, oh, now I have a stake mm. and I can speak out. Yeah. Um, your reactions and thoughts on what uh, Grace and Wanjiru are saying in terms of how we can mobilize more young women? Um, I would say I agree with everything they've said, but something else I would like to say is that um, everyone does have um, the power and, and the responsibility to actually um, tackle um, sexual and gender-based violence from their environment. For example, if you're a parent um, of a boy or a, or a girl, the first conversation you could have is on respecting of boundaries and mm. consent. So it would start, um, if, if your son or your daughter doesn't want to be touched, then respect by respecting his or her boundary, you're teaching him or her to respect other people's boundaries so that this issue of, of um, especially we, when it comes to SGBV, uh, the ownership that someone feels over a woman's body, we can stop it from that point. Mm. Again, if you're a teacher, Teach your children to respect, I mean, your, your students to respect each other. You know, create an environment that al pro fosters uh, conversations of um, consent, especially mm. consent. Mm. Consent should be everyday mm. conversations, mm. not only for women's benefit, but also for men. Mm. Because some boys are defiled, but when you see it on social media, it's such a joke. Mm. Some people are like, oh, I, I'm, so, I'm so jealous, I wish mm. it was me, you know? Mm. But it's a boy who has been defiled. Mm. So by you making jokes about it, mm. how is it helping? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know, so conversations of consent should be everyday conversations. Mm. So until it sticks in our minds, mm -hmm. because we can't say that we are tackling uh, gender-based violence at the point of when it has happened or mm. when you're an adult. These things, Start, yeah. The, yeah. the seed Start is planted when you're, when you're young. Mm. So let's start while we're still young. Mm. Yeah. yeah, okay. One thing you'd want to say to a young woman or man mm. watching this, um, just based on everything you've taken in and shared, um, especially if it's your peers, like I said, young women mm. who you know, look to voices like yours, mm -hmm. and she's wondering, how do I kind of get the guts to either share my experience mm -hmm. or do better or know better about mm. myself? based on the fact like you know we said earlier on there's a there's there's this kind of thread of self-awareness mm. that a lot of your peers you've said don't have what would you want to say to somebody watching this and trying to navigate understanding herself and being able to speak up and participate in more mm. of these conversations just one sentence you'd want to share with somebody like that they're like let me ponder on that <laughs> maybe one. I, can, I can start <laughs> yeah <laughs> sure. i would say um Self-awareness is not a destination, it's mm. a journey. Mm. You may think that you know yourself today, but you keep changing, you keep evolving. That's, that's the good thing about being human. And you should, be, 
You should be kind to yourself, enough to forgive yourself and learn from your experiences. Mm. Don't be strict. The same kindness you afford other people, afford it to yourself, mm. you know? Self-awareness is not a destination. It's a journey of constantly mm -hmm. getting to know yourself and discovering more about mm. yourself. Just be patient and be loving mm -hmm. to yourself. Yeah. yeah. That's powerful. Then it allows you to have agency, I think, at the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. What about for any of you? I like what she says about... It's a journey. It's a journey. It's... Um, you s for at 18, I imagine I look at myself as a teenager, I was a confused person, mm -hmm. um, trying to figure this thing yeah. out. Mm -hmm. But it is a journey. It takes time and it's just being in the moment and mm -hmm. absorbing it as you know as it comes and i guess mm -hmm. the, the one of the best things you can do as a young person is just always even if you do not have to stand on a platform and say guys this is what i'm going through mm -hmm. like always speak to the people around you share mm -hmm. guys i feel this way um yeah. mm -hmm. i feel this way um uh, this happened to me yesterday mm -hmm. it's just always sharing because sometimes we keep too much in the name of that's going to sound totally weird mm -hmm. or how, how, how are they going to think of this mm -hmm. so i'd say share because you, l mm. you let loose and mm. you leave so much baggage when you share with people. So And mm. keep a close circle of friends yes. because that's always mm. helpful. Um, this 10, 100,000 of friends don't actually, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. are not always so useful. So keep a small circle of friends and just just share with your friends. Mm. Yeah. Okay, mm. it's really important. What about for you? Yeah. I think for me it would be you're deserving of every opportunity that mm -hmm. you get. Mm. Do not feel like just because you're a young woman, you're young, you're a woman, you're an African, maybe you feel like, all right, maybe this world is for other people and not me, I'll just play, I'll just chase a chini. <laughs> You're deserving of every opportunity, I think that's what we say. And I think just to add on to the conversation of gender equality, I my message also to the men would be that we need you in this conversation mm -hmm. and we need your help. Sure, yeah. That it's not a men versus women thing, mm -hmm. we need you too, so. Yeah. Join us. Join yeah. Us. Yeah. yeah. Very good call to yeah. action. <laughs> yeah. Very, very important. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I think thank you for, you know, speaking for a lot of women like you and, and sharing your experiences. Um, this is already it. I think the, the, the moment you begin talking about it, it's yeah. this is how you begin kind of um, spreading the word, mm. you know, in your own way, even without knowing it. I know I used to, I didn't used to see that even when I, when I hosted programs. And then I realized, somebody watching you and hearing you say that, you've planted a certain mm -hmm. seed in them to say, oh, I can actually also mm -hmm. participate. So it's inviting people mm -hmm. to participate. Mm -hmm. um, and so thank you for lending your voices and your knowledge. And thank you as well for watching. There is a national um, helpline number, 1195. If you or someone you know has experienced gender-based violence, please use that line, it works. And there's incredible resources at hand there. And also register for the Generation Equality Forum. This is not just one of those forums that's supposed to come and go. No, it's supposed to have a lot of young voices in there, um, world leaders making commitments. And now we, we're in a generation, I think, that can hold people fully accountable. Mm. So don't miss this chance. Lend your voice in whatever little way. Um, and have this conversation, share it with friends and family, have it at home, have it in school, wherever you can. Because the more of us that are having these conversations, then the more we're spreading awareness. So mm -hmm. please don't trivialize or undermine the use of your own voice. Thank you for watching. Use the hashtag, your voice matters and act for equal and generation equality forum. And we'll see you back here again next time. Bye.